Greetings all, and first we have a trigger warning. You're about to see a terrible natural disaster. See this? This is my front lawn right now. This is the Great Texas Blizzard of 2023. We will rebuild. I know you're all laughing at me if you live in a further north climate, but the fact is no one here in Texas has any idea how to drive on snow. And there's at least a half inch out there you can see. So obviously nobody can do anything and the whole state shut down until this clears up. But on to a American terror beyond even this mighty blizzard, which is one you probably haven't heard of in this giant fish. Now, there's lots of stories about lake monsters all over the world. Most of them are long-necked fake plesiosaur sightings like Loch Ness or the Lake Van Monster in Turkey. I don't think that plesiosaurs have survived to the present day, certainly not freshwater ones, so other explanations have to exist for these. Now, one of the strong evidences against Lake Loch Ness and Lake Van is that now everyone has cell phone cameras, so you'd think more photos of these things would turn up. But in the Americas, and as far as I can tell, only the Americas, Americas, certain lake monsters are not fake dinosaurs, but are reported as gigantic fish. This is Flathead Lake in Montana. It is a huge freshwater lake, the biggest in the US, west of the Mississippi. Canada has some bigger ones west of the Mississippi, but hey, that's up in Canada. Flathead Lake has 10 times more surface area than the famous Loch Ness. Its maximum depth is only three or 400 feet, so it's shallower than Loch Ness, but it's still really big, and it has a monster. Some people have tried to turn the Flathead Lake monster into a plesiosaur or a dinosaur, but most of the stories, the more legit stories, if there is such a thing, seem to agree it's simply a giant fish, like maybe a sturgeon. That doesn't actually seem totally implausible. Eight foot long sturgeon have actually been caught in Flathead Lake, but the monster is supposed to be way bigger, like 20 or 40 feet. Is this even possible? Sure. The same species of sturgeon caught in Flathead Lake is known to get almost 12 feet long. There's no reason to suppose they couldn't get a little bigger. Another interesting feature of the story is it's not always reported to be aggressive. In fact, a three-year-old kid says he was rescued by the monster when he fell into the lake. Of course, he was only three, but still. Actually, you know what? I'm saying too much. The original Indian legend of the Flathead Lake monster, which there is one, it is aggressive, and supposedly it kills off half the tribe. In fact, it is the tribe's excuse for why there's so few of them left when the white man arrived. Now, as always, when American Indians tell a story from before my ancestors arrived, I figure the Indians should know they were there, right? On the other hand, the original story also has two women thwart the monster by turning themselves into inanimate objects. So the way I see it, either the original story has some fairy tale stuff added, or else the original story is entirely fairy tale. But the idea that a gigantic fish could lurk in large lakes seems plausible. After all, giant freshwater fish are totally possible. There's plenty of extinct fish well over 20 feet long. Freshwater ones too. I'm not even counting the saltwater giants. I mean, the biggest saltwater fish we know of was as big as a blue whale. It was back in the um, Jurassic. Uh, sadly, it was probably a filter feeder and didn't eat people, but I, get, I, the, I know there weren't people, but you know, it's, a carnivores are always more fun, right? But let's stick to freshwater. Now the Cherokee who live in the Carolinas or original they, there, talk about a fish called the Dakwa, which lived in the rivers. It was big enough to swallow a man whole, but was again clearly described as a fish, like a big trout or a pike. In Argentina, they describe a giant fish called the Piranu, with a horse-like head. Now, if this fish is related to the pike or the musculunge or the garfish, the horse-like reference makes sense. These fish have long heads, right? Of course, Argentina is a hemisphere away from the US, but it's still new world, you know? I have not been able to find old world reports of gigantic fish, only new world. To me, this makes the stories likelier to be true. You see, if a legend is based in something deep inside of us, some hidden belief or memory of dragons or venomous lizards or vampires or whatever, then they'd be universal, which is why, for example, vampires are recorded all across the world. New Guinea has them, Sweden has them, Alaska has them. It resonates with something inside all humans. But if something mysterious is real and geographically limited, then only people in their areas report it. And that's how it is with the giant fish. And one feature of many fish species is they don't die of old age. They just keep growing. So a giant fish is possible, though, you know, unlikely. One aspect of a giant fish that makes it a little more likely to exist, yet still not be known, is that since fish don't breathe air, they don't need to rise to the surface very much. 
Another feature of a giant fish is that it wouldn't eat insects. I mean, bugs are too small for a giant fish. One of the main reasons that little fish come up to the surface and you can see them at the surface and the whole reason the fly fishing works is that bugs are on the surface of the water so fish come to eat them. A giant fish is probably going to hunt down in the dark eating other larger fish. It might occasionally come up, but not very much. So we wouldn't see a giant fish often at all. Our fishing tackle wouldn't catch or attract them. It's not going to go after a worm on a hook. We'd basically never see them. We wouldn't be able to see them on our cell phones because they're underwater. And typically lake water is not very clear, at least the kind that has fish in it. If we use fish sonar in a lake with a giant fish, I have no idea how it would show up on the screen. Probably as a big snag or something instead of live animal. It's also well known that a big enough fish can easily eat a human. Okay, Maybe not a sturgeon like the Flathead Lake thing might be. They're pure bottom feeders. But there's no doubt that a catfish or a giant muskellunge could easily eat someone. Maybe not a giant trout, unless it was really giant. <clears throat> anyway, so for a long time in the southern U.S., there's been stories about gigantic catfish found in artificial reservoirs. This is a different type of giant fish I'm getting at here. So these are never caught on rod and reel, but that makes sense because you couldn't catch a giant catfish on a rod and reel. It would sit at the bottom of the lake, you'd tug on it, you'd think it was a snag, you'd cut your line. And we also know that really big catfish exist here and there in the world. The interesting thing about the reports of giant catfish is they're pretty much all from the southern USA and they're all from dams. This is particularly interesting because the stories don't come from people who say they saw them paddling around the reservoir. The stories are from divers. These divers wore scuba gear, or back in the day, they wore old-fashioned diving suits. They did hard work down deep in the water at the bottom of the dam. They didn't have cameras with them, they had tools. Plus, the water was so turbid and muddy, your camera wouldn't pick up much. Now, in the 1950s, the first reports of giant catfish down at the bottom of the dam started to appear. At this time, they were reported to be as big as cars. By the 1980s, the catfish were reported to be as big as station wagons or El Caminos. Today, they're usually reported to be as big as buses. Why do they keep getting bigger? Well, I mean, one reason might be because people like to expand on the legend. But there's another more chilling idea. What if, they, what if they keep getting bigger because the fish themselves are growing larger because the dams have been there so long? That's what catfish do. They get bigger and they'd have no predators. But Sandy, you ask, why would you give credence to these wild stories? Well, really, it's because I've actually spoken to one of the divers firsthand. He struck me as not making up a story to pull my chain, you know? He said he absolutely saw huge shadows passing just at the edge of his light at the bottom of the dam. And while he can't say for sure they were catfish, like, what else could they be? The water down there is really murky. You can't see anything easily. And if one of these super catfish died, they'd just sink into the mud. You'd never find their bones or their carcass. Creatures like this could literally live down there for decades and go unnoticed by us. Plus, divers do sometimes vanish at the bottom of those big reservoirs. It's a dangerous job. The worst aspect of this, speaking as a person who's kept catfish in a tank, is that whenever one of your fish disappears in the tank, always check the catfish first. He's probably the villain, because they'll eat anything that'll fit in their mouth. A 12-foot catfish would be happy to eat a person. The good news is that even if this is the first and beastie, it's probably not too dangerous. The giant fish reported from surface waters are mostly trout or sturgeon, which, you know, you're not going to be afraid of. And the deep water giant catfish, well, you'd have to dive down deep to meet them, like my friend did. So unless you put on a scuba deer and head down to the bottom of Boulder Dam, you're safe. Actually, you're probably safe at Boulder Dam anyway. There's no catfish in Boulder Dam. Norris Lake in Tennessee, though, that's a whole different kettle of fish. <laughs> anyway, here we are. So, if you like my stuff, subscribe. You can buy my stuff, and you can ask for notifications so you're always warned when something terrible is about to happen from Sandy. Thanks!